In modern days, if we can do this statue, we are going to use power tools. We are going to use modern saws. And I can tell you, it, it will be very difficult to cut the face, but it can be done. But when it comes to the ear, we see that the spaces will be very tiny. So they had to put a very small tool with a very small blade in order to do such tiny details, which was made in a perfect way. Okay, so no chisel can do this job, or also no regular power tool can do the job. The only thing can do this is a power tool, but in a very small size, like what we call it nano technology. Something like the tool of the dentist, which can go through and can make the carving. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. This is this is definitely one of the situations where you have to be here to oh, see how big it is. You know what? I knew they were big, but yeah. I had no. Idea. Yeah, no. It's 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 my bottom. No. Incredibly tall. And look at him compared to this. Your head up the hood, touch that. Put your hand all the way up, too. Oh, wow. Unreal. This is all you're Jason, Jason, can you feel me? Can yeah, sure can. Yeah, here. Oh, thank you. Absolutely, man. Has anyone not been in the box and wants to go you got it. Yeah. <laughs> Should have worked out this weekend. <laughs> wow, crazy. What an experience, my friend. It's like you feel like a little person there. You know, I have to be at least 20 feet tall to like be able to fit in that box. Awesome to do something. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you, Jason. Look at the hieroglyphics. Very crude. Very crude hieroglyphics. With some false doors motifs on there. False door motifs are very popular in Egypt and actually all over the world. Look at the shininess on this. It's like super smooth. Like this. 
Yeah, yeah there you go. You can see the, yeah. the, 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 the gooey yeah. fluid that was uh, placed on there to make it uh, smooth and shiny. Which, by the way, that same, um, this same kind of look is what you see in India with the bulls mm -hmm. and things. They have a similar shine to them. So I think it was well, a similar technology. I don't. You don't? No, because I've been reading about preservation of rock monuments. Yeah. And Egypt is putting on, it's kind of a, almost a plasticky kind of coating. Mm -hmm. And it's very consistent with what this looks like. And I think what they did was when they opened this up in, in 2012, they had coated a lot of these knowing that people would be down here touching them. So you don't think that has anything to do with the final step in making this uh, smooth? Like the final step of no, giving it that shine? No, because you see a lot of other statues and things that are just polished, like a baby's bottom. Yeah. And they don't have anything coating them yet. But because I've been finding papers that they're actually trying to preserve these monuments from the weather, and these of course are all of the weather, yeah. but the ones that are in the weather, they have been coating them, and they have various different coatings that they're trying. I think one coating turned a couple of things yellow, and so they had to get back to the drawing board, but they are trying to preserve a lot of these things from the weather. Deep now, I can't yeah. find documentation of that down here, but I'm, I'm still searching. Do you think, don't you think that they would that it would be a bit kind of dangerous for them to actually mess with this in any way. You know what I mean? Like It's better to mess with it and put a coating on it than have it deteriorate further. Right. So, you know, it's six of one, half dozen yeah. another. Because Yusuf is the one that pointed out that. Yeah, I know. That, oh, I know. Yeah, so, I know. Yeah, so I, I, I would think that maybe he would know if they had done that, but maybe he doesn't even know no, himself. he doesn't. And because I can't find written literature anywhere, and I go through scientific paper after scientific yeah. paper, and I'm not finding it. But because I'm, I'm research for, I mean, that's, that's what I do yeah. for work. One of these days I'll find find something of how they carve these things, like the hieroglyphs in it. But, like I said, you do see papers that they have done coatings on these things to preserve them. Yeah. But I can't find it where they specifically state this one. So, right, right, right. So that's just my theory. Right. Just, my God, these hieroglyphics are so crude, it's not even uh, funny. And I wonder if those were done in the 1900s. Oh, yeah, 1800s, 1900s, if somebody did it, and that's maybe why they threw this down here, and, or they, obviously it's still here, but that's why maybe they just let us come down here, because it's kind of a defaced But isn't, isn't, it, isn't it a trend, isn't there, a, a, not a trend, but don't you see rough carvings of hydrogryphs? On megalithic items all over Egypt, where the where the hieroglyphs are carved poorly. Yeah, the bowls, for example, from this morning, they were actually right. Like exactly, they were poorly poorly put on there. Yeah, and those were put on a long time after those bowls were made. Okay. Yeah. But you know, there's things like in the Assyrian. No, you don't see the carvings on them. They put uh, red red ochre on those. Yeah. So yes, they carve some things, but even their worst carving, I think, is better than this. This is terrible. Yeah. This is really bad. It is. Look at this line. They couldn't even... Yeah. Well, it. the thing is, the stone is so hard that they had a hard time even denting it. It's like, that's, this stone is so incredibly hard. Maze balls. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> I hear a little sound coming from somewhere. Yeah, who's who's humming around here? Yeah. Is it there? Yeah. Well, I don't know actually. Down at the other end. Is someone humming over here? I want to get Yeah? I'm going down. Yeah, let's let's go see what's going on. I can't believe we're getting all this access. This is so fucking cool, man. Kyle. Man, did you hear that? I heard that, man. Did you guys get in there, or how did you guys do that? Of course, I got there. You got there, but I actually wanted to go your way. Hold on. Did you need help out? Just have the. I thought you were. I thought you were. Well, I did, but I didn't want it. 
I mean, I'm literally looking up here. Like, like I can't even, my head doesn't even reach the top of this. The corners here are ever so slightly rounded. Slightly rounded here. Like it's not a perfect, so it's like. Thank you so much. <laughs> so here we are, the corners are a little bit rounded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, you feel the tone? Mm -hmm. You gotta find the right place. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah, the sides are all machined like they're all like slightly curved. If the lid was closed, if the lid was closed, the vibration would be even more. Oh yeah. Slight gap on the top. There might be dirt and little pieces of stone stuck. This looks like a different material. This, 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 this looks different, different from this. The color, see, pink, pink, dark. It's, it's a different color. It's granite. Hmm? Granite. Yeah, granite, but this, it has, see, color, like pink. Mm -hmm. This is a little darker. It's a little different. Sim, sim. <laughs> it's, yeah? That is one of the greatest achievements of the Inca civilization, their ability to literally sculpt the sides of mountains and create these massive Andene systems. The terraces are large because this was a royal Inca site. And you see the care and finesse that the Inca employed in order to almost mold the sides of the hills. Oh, wow. 
The town of Ointe Tambo itself, at least the foundations of most of the buildings that you're looking at, are Inca, or possibly even pre-Inca, making the entire area a place of incredible historic importance. So this is Machu Picchu, the ancient mountain, plus Huayna Picchu, the young mountain. And I think the reason why the Inca called this Machu Picchu is they found the megalithic core, which is there, that little area. So they said, this is ancient. All the construction on Huayna Picchu is Inca. The other side of that, is that where you said the Temple of the Moon is? <coughs> Temple of the Moon is halfway down the mountain. On the back side? <coughs> yeah, so it takes, if you want to see that, that takes a full day. You can't do it all. Unless you're like 18 years old and African colors. <laughs> I've done it twice. And I got to have, <clears throat> there were 4,000, 5,000 people here. I had the Temple of the Moon to myself for half an hour. As soon as I wanted to leave, other people showed up. It's like the temple's going, no, no, you stay here. Stay here. I'm mom. And it's, megal it's spectacular megalithic construction. It's perfect. Which one, David? It's down the right. back side of the Oh, okay. So that's where, where I'm pointing. You see that little peak there, which is the chin? Yep. And go down, that's that hill there where the people are climbing. Yeah, that's yeah, the Intihuatana. Yeah. That's the hitching post. <laughs> so we'll get a more descriptive <coughs> description of what it, what it was. And of course, thanks to Teo. Because anytime I meet with Teo, you know, I ask him questions about places. And he says, oh, it's more complicated than that. Because you know, they say, well, it's a hitching post of the sun symbolically, you know, they stopped the whoever lassoed the sun and stopped it for three days and then let it move on its path. And when you get <coughs> Teo's description, it's like it's a cosmic calendar, like it's got all these different facets and stuff, which have nothing to, you know, which are integral to the design. It's also the top of the mountain, like the whole thing we're standing on. <coughs> is granite is white granite so it's got lots of quartz crystal so that's why maybe some of you like me i'm feeling like well you know i'm getting hyper energized by this place so that being the top of the mountain means that all of that quartz that's underneath it it's like a focusing thing okay senior felix donde va Right, this is megalithic, right? Boom, boom. Hey, is everybody here? 
Sorry. <laughs> yes. It's like San Francisco. <laughs> With less air. On air. Steven. <laughs> Okay, so this is this is probably a this is probably a megalithic wall. It's not on a huge scale, but it's all consistent. Any megalithic structure was made out of one kind of stone from one quarry. They never mixed materials. So you can see this is all basalt. Basalt has a hardness of about 6.5 out of 10, with diamond being 10. Bronze is 3.5. You try to cut this with bronze, you can't. So, in and around the Plaza de Armas, and any of the, any of the, like all of the gray stone you're going to see is basalt. That was all taken from the same quarry, 50 miles away. And a conservative estimate is that a hundred thousand to a million tons was moved from the quarry to build ancient Cusco. <laughs> How do they do that? And then look at this transition from here. You see, you know, they go around the corner. Again, that's why Cusco is so complicated. So you see here. Then all of a sudden, the style completely changes. Got a mixture here. Brian, they reused it. Well, exactly. That's the Brian. What about the stakes there? The stakes? The stakes? Behind you? Yeah. Behind you? Oh, behind you? Oh, behind you? Oh, behind you? Okay, so the main, again, the main point here is to see the transition from cubes to organic. The organic is Inca. This is Inca. The cube is the megalithic creator. The Inca found that wall more or less intact. This part is all right. So they were here. So you don't think that those snakes are part of the original uh, design? No. How would they secure it after the fact? What's that? How could they secure it to the stone after the fact? They didn't, but they they would carve they would carve back in in order, order to.
Puma. Puma car. Okay. So we are at Siustani near Lake Titicaca in Peru and we have two styles of chulpas which are these ancient structures. You have a relatively rough one here and then above it one that is much much finer. Standard academics say that the poorly made ones were made first and then the fine ones were made later by the Inca. But now we know it's the opposite. That the big ones were made first. You can see how it tapers as it goes up. And then when the local native people moved into this area, they tried to copy them. And so they made these smaller ones and they used them for burying people. But the original function was more likely something to do with acoustics, which we will see when we get up there. their ability to literally sculpt the sides of mountains and create these massive andene systems. In the case of Ointe Tambo, the terraces are large because this was a royal Inca site. And you see the care and finesse that the Inca employed in order to almost mold the sides of the hills. The town of Ointe Tambo itself at least the foundations of most of the buildings that you're looking at are Inca or possibly even pre-Inca, making the entire area a place of incredible historic importance.